Good afternoon. Wildlife officials have confirmed the first Canadian case of chronic wasting disease in a moose from southern Alberta. The animal's carcass was sent for testing after it was killed in a collision with a vehicle near Hilda, Alberta. That's about 70 kilometers northeast of Medicine Hat. Chronic wasting disease was first found in that area back in 2006, but in white-tailed deer. It has never been found in a moose in this country. Chronic wasting disease is related to mad cow disease found in the human cat, found in cattle rather, and the human form known as Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease. It's still an open question whether it might go into humans. So we have to care about this disease. So this disease is expanding both geographically, as we see now in Alberta, it's coming up and it's, uh, it's migrating there. Uh, and also in terms of numbers, there are hunting areas in the United States where more than 50% of deer are sick. And it is not known at this time how the moose became infected with the disease. Since last September, the province has tested more than 3,000 deer from southern Alberta and discovered 23 cases of CWD. And Dory is in now. And Dory, this was just a brief reminder that it is still winter, but better temperatures on the way. Yeah, Mother Nature likes to do that to us occasionally in case we get too complacent. Just a little reminder here and there that we're still in the winter season. But come this weekend, and you'll see that in the five-day forecast, things are going to look very springish. And I'll tell you more details in a couple of minutes. Dory, today marks the first ever meeting of the Mayor and Council of Canada's newest municipality. Council for the Jumbo Glacier Mountain Resort Municipality got down to business inside, while more than 100 protested outside. Kimberly Davidson explains why. Protesters rallied outside the inaugural council meeting of BC's newest municipality. I feel that what's going on right here is a sham. At issue, the Jumbo Glacier Mountain Resort Municipality has no population and its mayor and council were appointed by the BC government. We don't believe that this is either democratic or constitutional. The controversial plans to create a ski resort in the Purcell Mountains west of Invermere has been in discussion for more than two decades. The regional district of East Kootenay handed the matter to the province in 2009 and the development was approved last March. It does honour all of the hard work that's gone on by so many other people in, in good faith through this long process. So parts of it aren't going to be a whole lot of fun, but I think it's important and I look forward to what's going to happen at the end of it. The mayor of Invermere, Jerry Taft, calls the creation of the municipality a slap in the face to democracy. In their letters patent, it clearly says that they must adopt the master development agreement from the developer. So uh, any discretion that they have is completely fettered. So really they are just puppets who are going to rubber stamp this zoning, no matter what uh, the residents in the nearby area have to say. Also outside the meeting, a small group of local residents who came in support of the new mayor and council and the resort's development. This is a land use issue. And uh, the way that, it, that uh, the zoning gets decided, it was voted on at the RDEK to turn it back to the province and go about it this way. That's democracy. That was democratic. They brought a motion and it got passed and that's, this is what happened because of that. Whether the establishment of the new municipality is constitutional or not is now up to the courts to decide. The West Kootenai Eco Society has filed a petition in BC Supreme Court asking for a judicial review of the legislation that made its creation possible. Kimberly Davidson, CTV News, Cranbrook. And so far, no word whether the Supreme Court will agree to hear the judicial review. A 17-year-old will stand trial after a dangerous crash that sent his brother to hospital clinging to life. The teen entered a not guilty plea this morning. Police say the boys were street racing in a residential neighborhood back in November when one of the vehicles lost control, hit a parked car and rolled several times. Police believe alcohol is a factor. The trial is set to begin on September 16th. And the case will drag on even longer for a Lethbridge police officer. Trevor Sparrow is charged with fraud and public mischief. His lawyer appeared in court this morning, but the case has been adjourned until next month. Sparrow is accused of filing a false report about his vehicle being broken into and his personal property stolen. Sparrow was paid by his insurance company after filing that. Mounties say is a fraudulent claim. Now the 37-year-old constable was on the job for eight years and is now suspended with pay until a court decision. 
NDP leader Brian Mason says the Redford government made false promises to Albertans and now the province is paying for them. Brian Mason spoke at the public library this afternoon. Mason held an open house. In light of the announcement, Alberta is facing a larger than expected deficit, reaching an estimated $4 billion. The Conservatives say they'll be freezing public sector manager salaries and nearly 480 workers will lose their jobs. But Mason calls the moves avoidable and irresponsible. So there's probably dozens and dozens of promises that were made by Alison Redford and the PCs in the last election that will not be kept. And um, I think they bought the election by misleading Albertans uh, about the true situation. Alberta's Finance Minister Fred Horn is set to deliver the province's budget on March 7th. City Council and Accessoride drivers have come to an agreement on a new five-year contract. Under the new deal, drivers will see an average increase of 6% per year. The Amalgamated Transit Union says the contract creates wage equality for its drivers by the end of 2016. The contract is retroactive to January 1st. This comes as City Council officially approved the purchase of five new low-emission diesel transit buses. The new buses will cost about $2 million. They'll be funded through provincial and federal grants. The city was originally planning to buy more hybrid diesel electric models, but officials have raised some concerns about the reliability of the hybrids. The city is preparing tender documents for the demolition of a downtown eyesore. The atrium building has had numerous owners over the years, but it's remained in its current state for three decades. A demolition order was issued last November after the most recent development proposal fell through. In January, the city hired engineers to inspect the site and try and determine the cost of cleaning up the property. But mayor, the mayor says council will have a better idea once the project goes to tender. What we tried to do was get a sense from them as to, the, uh, as to what the cost would be and they weren't specific in that regard so they could provide you a range. Uh, uh, the most they could really say was that it was, it was going to be greater than the value of the property itself and the property is worth somewhere in the area of uh, $300,000. And once the city has a firm idea of what the cost of demolition will be, council will make a decision on whether to proceed. A city could bill the owners for the expense, but the mayor says that will be determined at a later date. Campers and off-road vehicle users are concerned about a new government plan. Right now, the government is in the process of making changes to how land is used in the mountain areas between Waterton Lakes and Calgary. Some say the government is fast-tracking their decision without getting input from those who use the land the most. Terry Vote reports. Paul Desjardins is already looking forward to the upcoming camping season. The mountains are everything to me, that's why I live in southern Alberta. But he's concerned it might be one of the last summers he'll be able to enjoy his favourite activities in the backcountry. Even in these little areas. Desjardins says under the proposed South Saskatchewan Regional Plan, random camping could be lost forever and public land will be dramatically closed. And he fears off-road vehicles like quads and motorcycles may be confined to very small areas with massive restrictions. And understand it's about one very simple word, access. Access is the key. If you can't have access by ATV or an off-road vehicle, you're not going to be able to go to the spots that you've always gone to in your years gone by. The plan has already gone through the first and second phases of public consultation. That includes input submitted online and at 20 public meetings in different communities last year. But Desjardins believes most Albertans were unaware of the process, partly because it's called the South Saskatchewan Regional Plan. It needed to be called Alberta Land Use. I mean, how does this affect you? It's the South Saskatchewan plan, and when I first heard it, I thought, well, it's Saskatchewan. Why would I worry about it? Lethbridge business operator Alf Gurr is worried about it now. He not only sells off-road vehicles, he also carries a petition designed to raise awareness about the plan. People are streaming in here and signing this because they're not aware of what's going on, and they need to be aware of what's going on because we're going to lose the one and only thing we have in the mountains, our enjoyment. The province says concerns over what's in the plan are premature, that there will still be time for feedback and public input after the draft plan is released later this year. But Desjardins is concerned if Albertans wait until phase three to respond, it may be too late to make any significant changes. Terry Vogt, CTV News, Lethbridge. 
A spokesperson for Environment and Sustainable Resource Development says the draft plan will be based on consultations with municipalities, stakeholders, the First Nations and the general public. But it says there will be an opportunity for people to provide input again later this year.